So you might have heard that the whole entire HVAC industry is moving away from 410A refrigerant. And HVAC manufacturers are going to be replacing 410A with R454B or R32. But the big question is, which one's better? Well, let's find out. Hi, this is Kenneth with Atlas AC, and at any point during this video, if you find it to be helpful, please hit the like button, and that will really help me out with the YouTube algorithms. So there's currently a debate going on in the HVAC industry about which refrigerant is going to be best on the future of all HVAC equipment here in the United States. So currently, there are a lot of folks saying that R32 is the superior refrigerant because it requires less refrigerant for the equipment to work and that it's more efficient than R454B. And the other side is saying that's not true, the performance is actually neck and neck. So if we take a look at the HVAC industry, you can see here that the bulk of HVAC manufacturers are actually going to go with R454B for their residential equipment. And there's one major manufacturer, which is one of the largest in the world, that is deciding to use R32. So at the time of filming this video, all these manufacturers are in the process of changing over to the new refrigerant, or already has. And yes, this changeover is part of a government mandate, which means the pricing of the new equipment is going to go up a little. So in this process, is there going to end up being a winner and a loser? Well, let's give it our best educated guess. So the key things that we're going to be looking at is what are the differences in efficiency? Does it place an additional load on the equipment? And is there a difference in the installation process? So what's interesting about the efficiency question is one refrigerant actually is a little more efficient than the other. However, they're both a tad bit more efficient than 410A. But the shocker in all this is how they accomplish the increase in efficiency because it could lead to some long-term impacts. And this ends up being why we're seeing a split in the industry. So this next part is rather lengthy and we get into the weeds. Now, if you're simply looking for a top level rundown, you can skip over to my summary and conclusions, which you can find near the 16 minute mark. So let's track down why the industry went in two different directions. So this refrigerant change was no surprise to manufacturers because the government regulations was in the pipeline for a long time. So we can pull up third party test reports from about a decade ago when manufacturers were trying to sort through which refrigerant that they were going to go with. So let's jump over to the AHRI website and do a quick search on refrigerant test. You can see here that there is a ton of different tests that's done and the tests that we are looking for are the R32 and the R454B test and we have roughly 13 pages to sort through. Well, this sucks. So I landed on two different reports that we can use, one being from Carrier and the other one being from Goodman. And the reason why I landed on these two reports is because we sell both of these product lines. The carrier gets sold into residential and light commercial, and our Goodman line gets sold into property management. And since I understand these two brands a little bit better than others, it just made the most sense to use these as our example. Okay, so now I have to make two very strong disclaimers. The first being is that I don't represent either one of these manufacturers when it comes to this topic, so everything that I'm about to say is solely my opinion. And I am not an engineer and probably have no rights looking at these reports. And the second disclaimer is, these tests were done about a decade ago, and the equipment that they were using was clearly not optimized for these refrigerants. It's more like they were optimized for 410A. So if we fast forward to today with production equipment, they're obviously going to have it designed, engineered, and optimized specifically for these refrigerants. So we know that both of these refrigerants are slightly more efficient than R410A. However, each one gets the job done differently. So these reports are going to help us to determine the characteristics of these refrigerants and potential future implications. So here are the two test reports that I landed on, and if you'd like to reference them off the AHRI website, you can look up test report number 42 and test report number 52. This report here was for Goodman Manufacturing, and this one over here was for United Technologies or Carrier. So the Goodman test is a soft optimization test for R32 in a three ton air conditioner. And the test that was done for Carrier is a drop test. And as you can see, they're going to be testing a lot of different blended refrigerants in this report in a 410A heat pump split system. The differences in between these two tests is a drop test is simply taking 410A equipment and then replacing the refrigerant with one of these here listed. So basically what it's doing is trying to establish a baseline difference in between the tested refrigerant and 410A. However, a soft optimization test over here is one step past a drop test, which is they're starting to tinker with the equipment and the refrigerants in some cases. So what I'm gonna do is scrape some key information off these two reports so we can easily compare them side by side. 
So the key information that we're going to be looking for, let's go down to page 16, is going to be the refrigerant charge. We want to make sure that the indoor and outdoor temperature matches in between the two tests. The total capacity, energy efficiency ratio. Then we're going to look at the compressor discharge temperatures and pressures. Now let's go through the combined data and see if we can figure anything out. So you can see that the first test that we're going to be looking at is set for a 80 degree indoor temperature and a 95 degree outdoor temperature. And the second one that we're going to be looking at is going to stay the same in the indoor temperature. However, the outdoor temperature is going to go up to 125 degrees. And you can see that the first report that I have categorized is the Goodman R32 prototype oil test, and it is test report number 42, and these are the pages. Same with the Carrier R454B, you can go ahead and check out that report and those pages, and the pages are slightly different down here as well. So the first thing that we're going to look at is the cooling capacity of the refrigerant or its ability to transfer heat, however you want to look at it. Then from there, the charge or the amount of refrigerant needed to get the job done. Then from there, the system power usage, after that, we'll look at the discharge pressures and the discharge temperatures. And finally, the EER, which is going to represent the efficiency of this system at these temperatures. In this column here, I have 410A. And then in this column here, I have R32. From here, this is showing the net change. In green, we're seeing a positive net change. And then in orange, we're showing a negative net change. And over here we have R410A being compared to R454B and its net changes. So if we start off with looking at the cooling capacity in BTUs per hour, R410A is able to deliver 35,973 BTUs per hour. And R32 is able to deliver 38,669 BTUs per hour, making R32 7% more efficient than R410A. And if we look at the same thing on a 125 degree outdoor temperature, you can see that R410A is able to deliver 27,584 BTUs per hour, while R32 is able to deliver 31,566 BTUs per hour, which is an increase in efficiency of 14%. So basically, the hotter the outdoor temperature, the better this refrigerant performs. Then if we look at the amount of refrigerant needed to conduct this test, you can see that 410A is running at 6.3 one pounds and R32 is running at 5.56 pounds or a 12% reduction in the refrigerant needed. And we see the exact same thing down here. So to keep things moving quickly, I'm going to stop calling out each reading and focus on the percentages. Now if we look at the power usage here, you can see that R32 actually uses 4% more power than 410A. And at a 125 degree outdoor temperature, you can see that it drops down to a 1% increase in power usage. The compressor discharge pressures do increase by 2% at 95 degrees. And at 125 degrees, the pressures increase by 3%. Now the discharge temperature is where we're going to see the biggest increase of 16%. And at 125, you can see that we're running at a 12% increase. So the EER at 95 degrees is showing a 3% increase in efficiency. So you might be asking, how is it that the system efficiency increased by 3%, however the refrigerant cooling efficiency jumped up by 7%? Well the reason for this is there's a slight increased load on the compressor, which in turn offsets some of the efficiency. Now if we go down to the 125 degree section, you can see that the overall efficiency of this system improved by 13%. And that's just largely due because it's performing better at a higher temperature. Now if we jump over to R454B, we're going to see something completely different. At a 95 degree day, you can see that the cooling capacity actually dropped by 6%. So the cooling capacity of R454B is 6% lower than R410A. And at 125 degrees, we can see that R454B's efficiency drops by 1%. So it does improve some and it is using 13% less refrigerant at 95 degrees, and on this test it's showing a 23% reduction at 125 degrees. We can see that the power usage actually went down on the R454B refrigerant by 5%. What that means is it's taking a load off the compressor. So now if we go down to 125 degrees, you can see that the load reduction increases by 7%. And then when it comes to the discharge pressures, you can see that there's a drop of 6%. And at 125 degrees, you can see that there's a drop in pressures of 8%. 
and the discharge temperatures do go up by 7% at both temperature ranges. And you can see that the efficiency of the entire system did drop by 1%. You would think that it would have a bigger drop than that because of the 6% drop in the cooling capacity of the refrigerant. However, due to the reduction in the load to the compressor did lower by 5%, we can see that offset here. And at 125 degrees, we can see that the total system efficiency went up by 6%. And once again, that is due to it being able to perform better at a higher temperature. Now the downside to EER is it only gives us a snapshot at these temperature ranges. However, when comparing the efficiencies of these refrigerants, the most important rating to look at is SEER. Because SEER is going to show us how our electric bill is going to be affected by the end of the year. And jumping back over to R32, we can see that the overall SEER rating improved by 3%. And if we look at R454B, we can see that the overall SEER rating improved by 1%. So overall, both refrigerants did have a minor improvement in efficiency. R32 did perform slightly better than R454B. So we can see that there's a slight increase in efficiency in both refrigerants. However, how they're accomplishing this increase in efficiency is different from one another. R32 has a greater cooling capacity, however it adds a small load to the compressor. R454B has a lower cooling capacity, however it is taking a small load off the compressor. So you might be saying, that's all fine and dandy, but these reports are almost 10 years old. But what are we seeing in today's production equipment? The short answer is, something very similar to these reports. If you pull up the SEER rating of the new equipment, you're going to find that it either stayed the same or slightly improved for both refrigerants. We also see that the discharge pressures did slightly go up for R32 and it went slightly down for R454B. So does that mean R454B equipment is going to last longer than 410A equipment? The short answer is potentially. Keep in mind that the load that it is removing is nothing earth shattering and is fairly small. However, every little bit could help. But what about R32? Is the higher pressures and temperatures going to shorten the life of the equipment? It potentially could, but I'm not sure. And keep in mind that the increased load that we're looking at here is fairly incremental. I will say this, I wouldn't bet against Daikin because Europe and a lot of Asia has been using R32 as their primary refrigerant for about a decade now. And Daikin is one of the biggest manufacturers supplying them. So R32 is a very familiar refrigerant to Daikin. Daikin, Daikin, tomato, tomato. So is this why we see Daikin and all of its product lines go with R32, while the rest of the industry is going with R454B? And the answer is partially, because there's another component that we haven't touched on yet, which has to do with the oil that is being used in the refrigerants. So let's take a look at the makeup of these refrigerants. We can see that R410A is made up of 50% R32 and 50% HFC125, and it's using a common POE oil. And essentially what the oil does in the refrigerant is it helps keep the compressor lubricated, very much like the oil in your car does for the engine. Now if we drop down to R454B, we can see that 68.9% of this refrigerant is made up of R32, and 31.1% of it is made up of R1234YF. And this is the refrigerant that the automotive industry uses. And the oil that is being used in this refrigerant is similar to the oil that's being used in R410A. So both R410A and R454B are blended refrigerants, meaning they're using more than one refrigerant to make up the compound. However, when we look at R32, it is not a blended refrigerant, it is 100% R32. Now when we look at the oil that is being used in R32, they're having to use a different oil from 410A and R454B. So if we go back to the 2015 time frame when manufacturers were trying to determine which refrigerant to go with, all of the available oils that was capable of working with R32 would begin to break down at the higher temperatures that R32 was running at. This would eventually lead to frying the compressor. And Daikin is no spring chicken when it comes to R32, so they obviously knew this. So when going back and looking at the Goodman report, I wanted to use the soft optimization test. And that's why in the test we see them using a prototype oil because there's a chance that they have an ace up their sleeve. And the prototype oil did perform better than the standard POE oil. So what I'm trying to point out here is there's a chance that they already had a solution based on their past experience using R32 and other product lines. Since this is a different oil from 410A, what that means is these two refrigerants should never be mixed at all. So what this means is, whenever you go to replace an AC system, you want to view it as an old R22 system. So there needs to be a lot more emphasis placed on cleaning out the line set so you don't end up taking out the compressor. So on top of a nitrogen flush, pulling a triple vacuum, vacuuming it down to 500 microns, 
You need to also flush out the line set with RX-11. And if there's any gunk buildup, you're going to need to use a line set scrubber to make sure that you get everything out of the line set. There's nothing major about these additional steps in the install process. However, they just can't be skipped. Now when it comes to R454B, it ends up being a very similar refrigerant to R410A. So if there's some remnants of 410A left in the line set, it's not the end of the world because the oils are compatible and won't break down to take out the compressor. So if we back up to 2015, when manufacturers were trying to decide which refrigerant to go with, we can speculate that this group of manufacturers decided to go with R454B because the efficiencies were slightly better because it was pulling a small load off the compressor. The refrigerants ended up being very similar to R410A and the install process would stay virtually the same. So they're essentially swimming downstream with the most minimal amount of changes for this refrigerant changeover. And for R32, Daikin was probably thinking the rest of the world is moving over to R32 or is already using R32. We're already making R32 products, so why not keep everything universal? So what is the overall summary and conclusion on which refrigerant is better? So let's go back to our charts and do a quick overall rundown. In this column, I have R410A, which we're going to use as our baseline. You can see that the baseline that I have set for everything is three stars. And over here I have R32 and R454B, and you can see the different number of stars in each category showing whether the rating improved or decreased. So if we start off with looking at the cooling capacity, which is essentially how efficient the refrigerant is at transferring heat, we can see that R32 is a more efficient refrigerant than 410A. However, R454B is a slightly less efficient refrigerant than 410A. Now if we look at the refrigerant charge or the amount of refrigerant used in these systems, we can see that R32 is using less refrigerant to get the job done over 410A. And the same thing is for R454B. Now if we look at the power usage or the burden on the compressor, we can see that R32 is using slightly more power than 410A, meaning it's adding a slight burden to the compressor. Then when we move over to R454B, we can see that the exact opposite thing is happening. This refrigerant is using less power to get the job done and removing a slight burden off the compressor. Now if we go down and look at the discharge pressures, we can see that R32 is running at higher pressures. However, once again, it's the exact opposite for R454B. Now if we look at the discharge temperatures, we can see that R32 is running at higher temperatures and R454B is running at slightly higher temperatures. So if we look at the efficiency of the system or the SEER rating, which is going to be what's affecting our electric bill at the end of the day, we can see that R32 did improve efficiency and that is largely due to the cooling capacity. However, R454B only had a very slight improvement over 410A in efficiency. Even though that it had a lower cooling capacity, however, it was removing a burden off the compressor, which still allowed it to be slightly more efficient. Now if we go down to the installation, for R32, there is one small step that can't be skipped, which is running an RX-11 flush through the line set before installing the new equipment, because the oils in the refrigerant are different and can't mix. And if this step is skipped, then it will damage the equipment. However, for R454B, the install process is exactly the same as R410A. So from a top level, R32 is slightly more efficient than R454B. However, R454B is slightly easier on the equipment meaning that the compressors might end up lasting a tad bit longer. And in the install process, there's one additional step that can't be skipped for R32. However, for R454B, it is identical to R410A. So overall, I'm giving R32 a three-star rating and R454B a three-and-a-half star rating. I hope everybody had a Merry Christmas. We were wanting to do something small for somebody. So we'll do a raffle for the first 100 people that comment, and the winner will get $100. I really appreciate everybody. Hope y'all had a Merry Christmas. If you found this video to be helpful, please hit the like button. We also have free buyer's guides and price lists on our website that you might want to check out. Until next time, have a good one.